Hello everyone. Today we are talking about Threema and what makes Threema secure. First of all, Threema uses the NaCl encryption, um, which if you know your chemistry is just the, the chemical code for salt. So that's why it's called the salt encryption, which is a bit confusing because salt actually is a, is a determined name within encryption, but anyway. And all communication in Threema are E2E, so end-to-end -end encrypted per default. If you remember, Telegram had this problem that you can activate E2E encryption. However, it's not on per default. Now, how does Threema work? If you register with Threema, the first thing you do, and this is what Alice and Bob are doing now, is you generate a private public key pair. The public key goes uh, out to the Threema server, which now stores the keys and also uh, generates a random ID. This ID is, is always, um, I think, eight characters long. And if you want, you can tell Threema your phone number and your email address, and they will generate hashes based on those. However, then this is the big difference, for example, to Signal, you don't have to provide any personal information if you don't want to. You can be completely anonymous, and Threema only knows a randomly generated ID and your public key. These IDs are sent back to the users and so because they need to know their ID because otherwise other people cannot add them as contacts. And we will see in a second how this works. Now, the private part of the uh, private public key pair is securely stored on the communication partner's devices. Now, if Alice wants to send a message to Bob, she needs to add him as a contact and she needs his ID. And if Bob doesn't want to reveal anything about himself, for example, his email address or phone number, which could be used to search on the Threema server for Bob, then he has to tell Alice his ID through other means, through other channels, or maybe they sit together. But if you want to stay anonymous, this is what you have to do. You have to tell your communication partner your ID in some way. Because Alice can now use this ID and ask the Threema server, hey, can you please send me the public key of this ID, which the Threema server happily does. Now, Alice uses this um, public key of Bob together with her own private key uh, for the elliptic curve if you have an algorithm. Now, I've made a video on elliptic curve and you can watch it if you click on the top right corner of the video. For now, just um, accept that they use this diffie Hellman key uh, generation algorithm and they hash the result and which is the shared secret. The shared secret, denoted by this uh, purple key, is then used together with a nonce, which is a randomly number only used once, uh, in the Excelsa algorithm to generate um, an encryption key, which is used to encrypt a plain text. And this thing, which is, which is now a cipher text because it's encrypted, uh, is uh, sent to Bob. But before Alice can send it to Bob, she first needs, well, she also needs to send the nonce, obviously, because Bob also has to calculate all this stuff that Alice calculated. And uh, Threema also now uses the Poly algorithm in order to generate a message authentication code so that Bob knows that this is in fact Alice who sent the message. So uh, Alice takes all that and sends this to Bob. And Bob can now use the exact same steps Alice has taken, just in reverse basically, in order to unlock the message, so to decrypt it, uh, and also to validate the message authentication code. And the reason why he can do this is because of the properties of the elliptic curve diffie hellman function, because uh, Alice, what Alice does is she uses Bob's public key and her private key. But this results in the same shared secret uh, if Bob uses his own private key and Alice's public key. And this is the beauty of the elliptic curve diffie hellman because uh, this way you have this asynchronous diffie hellman which is not possible using normal diffie hellman Now, one quick word, or maybe a bit a longer word, um, regarding perfect forward secrecy. Now, just a recap, what perfect forward secrecy means is that, uh, well, first of all, it's one of the protection goals uh, regarding secure messaging. And again, you can click on the top right corner if you want to know more about all the protection goals uh, and principles of secure messaging. However, uh, just for now, perfect forward secrecy means if a key gets leaked or gets uh, gets lost or gets compromised uh, rather. And you have here now Alice's key uh, gets stolen by Eve. 
just because Eve now has this key, if perfect forward secrecy is in place, she cannot read old messages because they have been encrypted with a different key which cannot be derived from the current key or from the from the key uh, she, she stole or, or from the key that got leaked. So this is this means perfect forward secrecy. And this is, unfortunately, not enabled per default when you're using Threema. Uh, you have to negotiate it, which means um, Threema has two variants of that. The first is that uh, which is called complete PFS, complete perfect forward secrecy. And you basically say, okay, one communication partner says to the other, hey, you want to use uh, PFS? And the other one agrees and everybody's uh, on board. And what they both do is they generate a private public key pair of an ephemeral key. And this key is only basically used as input for the initial message. The rest is ratcheting, which I will come to in a second. But now, for now, it's important to know for complete PFS, both parties generate parts of the public ephemeral key. Uh, and we'll come back to why, why this matters in a second. But And this ephemeral key uh, is now used to basically decrypt messages between Alice and Bob. And if any of their private keys gets leaked, it does not affect the cryptography or the encryption of this particular message because the ephemeral key is not derivable from the private keys alone. However, there's also, if there's like this complete uh, PFS, there's also unilateral PFS because Alice can ask, wait, well, wanna use PFS? And even before Bob agrees, uh, or even if he doesn't agree, you can still generate the public key part or the public private key pair of the ephemeral key unilaterally. So only Alice now um, generates this key and can use it to encrypt this message and Bob can actually decrypt it. However, if uh, Bob's private key gets leaked, this message is also not secure anymore. However, if Alice's private key gets leaked, this message is still secure. So the way perfect forward secrecy works why and why this is in fact uh, perfect forward secrecy is because this uh, ephemeral key is used together with the Threema ID of, uh, of the communication partners uh, in a key derivation function, which is then used to output a chain key, which is basically the input for the next iteration, and a message key, which is used to encrypt the, the current message. As you can see, this is that's why it's called chain. Uh, and that, that's basically the, the whole process is called ratcheting, but it's a chain of, of keys that get derived from the previous keys, as you can see, and this repeats for each, uh, for each message. I go a little bit more into detail on my video on Signal, uh, which also uses the ratcheting algorithm, and you can click on the top right corner if you want to know more. But for now, uh, it's uh, or the short version is basically that if you now, for example, um, the, the, la the latest or the last message key gets leaked, you cannot derive previous message keys from this message key. Uh, and this is how perfect forward secrecy is ensured because you cannot decrypt past messages with a current or with a newer message key. Now a couple of um, security considerations. The biggest difference to Signal is that Signal needs your phone number. And in Threema, you can give them your phone number. You can also give them your email or either of those uh, options is possible, but you don't have to. And this is, in my opinion, the biggest difference to Signal. A couple of other security considerations. On the plus side, Threema uses SALT encryption, which is tested, audited, and is very secure. They have a bit size of, I think, 256 bit, which is very secure. Um, they use key ratcheting, which is demonstrated shortly here, uh, which means it's not per default, but it is uh, a way to ensure perfect forward secrecy. And they are GDPR compliant since everything is stored within Europe. They are in Switzerland, which is not in the EU, but still the GDPR applies. A couple of negatives. Perfect forward secrecy is not on per default, and I really don't know why. They probably have their reasons, but um, yeah, I think this is a big negative that it's not per default. Also, uh, Threema, obviously, as you might know, is not for free. So Threema costs something which is good in a way because you're not dependent on advertisers or anything or on any kind of philanthropist. However, it does cost money, right? You need to be able or you need to want to spend money on a messenger, uh, especially regarding that every other messenger is free. So the big question is, is Threema worth it? And the question here really is, is Threema better than Signal? 
because Signal is also very secure. Uh, as you know, if you watched my videos on Signal and the various uh, parts of the, of the algorithm. But um, is 3 mana better than Signal? Is it worth the price? And I think if you want to stay anonymous, it is. As I've said, you don't need to provide 3 mana with any personal information. For 3 mana, 3 mana has no idea who you are. If there's a leak of anything and you didn't provide them with your phone number or your email address, there is no way to identify who you are. And this is a big plus. If this is what you want, then go for it. Download Threema. Uh, for everybody else, I think that Signal is secure enough, but ultimately it's your choice. And I'll thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next.